Um, but uh, what I do think we have as benefit is at least a strategy, and that's what I'm trying to offer to us, at least a strategy. Okay. Um, so, um, again, so see, you see the question? <laughs> You know, I know this is going to come, and you're, you're going to, you know, I cover myself all the time because I do that for our mutual benefit. I'm not, I can't extend myself. I won't say anything about internally um, other than, you know, how would you apply the baking soda and lemon juice internally? All I can say is that, at this point, what's smart to say is that, uh, I can say a couple things, right? Is that baking soda and citric acid together produce sodium citrate, one of a class of many, many, hundreds or thousands of what they call ester salts, that particular one is very alkalizing, okay? And there are others, okay? Now, just to give you a point of reference, take a look at an Alka-Seltzer sometime and see what's in it. And guess what's in an Alka-Seltzer? What's in an Alka-Seltzer is baking soda and citric acid and one other thing, at least in, the, in those that I have looked at. And they put aspirin in there too. Uh, I, I, I'm, not, I'm not advocating anything. I'm just telling you that uh, Alka-Seltzer with the addition of aspirin is basically a combination of the very ingredients I'm talking about. You want to know something fascinating? I was reading on Alka-Seltzer. And they said in the early, I remember as a kid, but they had these commercials on Alka-Seltzers. Alka-Seltzers were promoted a whole lot more um, in, in my youth um, than they are now. They were all over the TV. And they got to the point where they say, you have the blahs, and they would call them just the blahs, B-L-A-H. You have the blahs take Alka-Seltzer. And what's happened, what, what was happening is people were taking Alka-Seltzer for sort of a general unknown reason, um, which uh, they were able to advertise successfully and just say, well, just, just take these Alka-Seltzers. And then uh, eventually that was cut off um, because I think it had to do with the aspirin thing, okay? Uh, notice I'm not saying anything about aspirin here. I... No, that's a whole separate subject. But it's just of interest that something like that a long time ago was actually widely advertised and then it was curtailed uh, because of complications maybe that would arise from, from people taking uh, aspirin or something like that on a continuous basis. Anyway, all right, I'll try to get a couple more. You know, definitely uh, cut us off by 8.30, but let's try to get a couple more. Uh, thanks, Lynn Marie. I'll try to do so. If there is sufficient interest, I will. We have... Um, about a couple dozen people that have come in tonight. And hopefully if the word gets out, we can keep it up. Uh, any idea on the why behind this? Do you suspect it relates to ACS work with NBCs? Okay, uh, uh, sorry, I need, I need some more information on that. Uh, ACS would have to be given to me, and NBCs would have to be given to me, because I just don't know exactly what you're referring to. And the why is such an open question. I talked about a little bit about that last week, a little bit, and that question came up. Uh, it's too it's too broad for um, too broad for me tonight. Um, none of the all the questions are important. They usually are. Else, why would you be asking them? It's just that I, that's going to open up uh, so many unknowns that you'll end up listening to me um, uh, beat around the bush too much, and I'll drive you crazy. But you you could start at least by being familiar with the documentary that I made, and there's a listing in there of five reasons. And if you listen to some of the interviews, that list is up to seven things in terms of what I would regard as the why. Um, if I drink red wine, will it increase the growth? Oh, my, no more wine. Well, um, well, what we, a couple of comments on wine. Um, oh, I'll recommend this book. This will be, uh, this will be something for you to look at. I have this uh, book called, uh, it's called The Acid Alkaline Food Guide. I'll try to put it up to the camera. I'm not sure if you can see it or not, but we'll try. Yeah, you can see it, I think. The Acid Alkaline Food Guide. And it says, a quick reference to focus, to foods, a quick reference to foods and their effect on pH levels. Um, and it's by a lady named uh, Dr. Susan Brown. Um, interesting book. It's very simple. It's not fun to read. It's just a chart. But just about everything we eat can be found in there. It's, it's a bit of an education, I would say on uh, the normal diets that we have and what's alkaline, what's acid, what type of foods are acid and what types of foods are alkaline. Uh, I'll just make a, com a couple comments on red wine. Uh, red wine is very acidic. I didn't know that when I started out, but I didn't know it's very acidic. And it's uh, conducive to the growth of this inside. That's one comment. I'm not saying bad or good. I'm just saying it is. It's acidic. Uh, second thing, and it, it is of interest, has been from the beginning, that uh, red wine 
maybe white wine for that matter, but we know that red wine uh, extracts this material um, from the gums. Um, so does it increase it or decrease it? You know, that's a, that's a mixed answer there, right? But those are two facts uh, that are established at this point. Red wine is acidic, and red wine um, extracts this material from the gums. So we can have two sides of a coin uh, quite frequently, and we don't know all those answers. Uh, we don't know. Okay, I'll try to get to uh, another one here. And uh, I, I can't comment on it, unfortunately. It's about uh, wondering if the geoengineers in Monterey today, I see, with that, I know they were, uh, there was a group in uh, San Diego a couple of weeks ago. Uh, the question, the statement is, wondering if the geoengineers in Monterey, California today discussed any biological agents in the mix with the poisons that we are regularly sprayed with. Kim Caldera, Caldera and David Keith were a keynote speakers care to comment. Uh, well, I wasn't there, so I don't know. Um, uh, we do, what we do know is that those conferences are are um, garnering increased attention. We can say that. Uh, increased attention and interest, are they not? And uh, that's, um, that's a good thing. And uh, we may have our own conference with the Institute if you keep in tune here. Um, so that's all I can say. Uh, people are paying attention to the existence of the conferences, and that's good. Uh, and... and I, I, I'll have to jump to a, a new person, too, so that it doesn't all um, uh, get on a single person. So I may bypass for a little while. Um, uh, and uh, uh, citric, citric acid is also in a lot of sodas and such. It's not an uncommon ingredient. Um, absolutely correct, right? AP, so there they come, American Chemical Society and Nanobiochips. And uh, i got to thank, even though I'm not sure I answered the question right, but now that you've... Uh, explain the abbreviations. I'm not sure if I can find it real quickly or not. I'm sorry I can't find it. There we go. No, that's, I was asking for ACS and NBC, so I'm not sure. Um, so anyway, somebody's trying to help me, but I didn't match it with the, I see that's your name. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay. Uh, American Chemical Society and, and uh, Biochips. And hang with me for just a second. I want to see if I can find it again. So I understand the question of the con context of the question, if possible. Okay, I'm on. My goodness, I had it. I'm sorry, I, you know, I had it, but I lost the question there. I'm trying to find it. I'm sorry. I'll have to. If we have time, I'll try to come back. But I lost it. All right. Um, yes. Um, Okay, so here's one that comes out all the time, right? It's a great question. I never provide the first answer, the right answer, but I do the best. Anything I can do to get involved in active against is great. Okay. Well, no perfect answer. I'll say a, a, a couple things, right? And that is, and I said this last week also, and that is every one of us has certain talents and skills. We're good at certain things. I think this is the natural thing to focus on is identify what you're good at and apply your talents and resources towards addressing an issue if you think it's important. That's what I've done. I have a particular set of skills from my particular background. I'm lousy at a thousand other things. I do some things well or okay. That's where I've applied myself. I would ask you to apply yourself in that same way, which is which is appropriate and fitting for you and your personality. And I can't say what it is, but that's the obvious thing I would say. If you care about something, then do something. And if you're good at it, it just makes it that much easier and, and better for all of us. And you don't have, you know, it's not necessarily entirely a natural process for me to be conducting a webinar, but I'm putting myself out there because I think it's necessary. If you're good at it, it's a lot easier and just go for it. I'll just say that to begin with, and then I'll say secondly, uh, I've gone further over the last uh, uh, year now, a year and a half, with a small group of people to form a nonprofit. And it's uh, under uh, the name Carnicum Institute. You'll find it tied into the website. And uh, we need a lot of help. Uh, we're just getting our foot on the ground. Uh, we do hope to start getting our word out a little bit stronger in the near future. Um, but you can at least link up with the Institute. We can't keep up with emails and correspondence properly yet. 